do you reconcile the vengeful, vindictive God of the Old Testament with the loving God that Jesus talks about in the New Testament? They seem to be entirely different entities. Does this question have your name at the top? <laughs> Well, my advice is read both testaments carefully. Right. <laughs> it's all there in both testaments. Exactly. It's too bad that we have that caricature of the Old Testament, but it's equally bad that we have that caricature of the New Testament. Uh, Jesus uh, witnessed to uh, the seriousness with which God took Godness and God will not be mocked. And uh, I think that the interpretive trick uh, is to find the right testimony to God for the particular circumstance, but not to assume that the same testimony to God is the best testimony in every circumstance. So it is to recognize that the testimony of the Bible is very pluralistic because God is a many splendored agent, as are we in God's image. I think it goes back to the fact that we just need multiple images for who God is. Yeah. And this is, again, a kind of dualism that's not helpful in our world anymore. Um, that the Old Testament has so many beautiful and helpful accounts of how we can encounter God and what God's like. And, and, and I think, as you said earlier, that even the fact that God can be angry is helpful to us, um, depending on the moment that we find ourselves, the, the position we find ourselves in. Um, that God is lamenting um, is helpful to us. Um, and Jesus laments, and Jesus is angry, and I, I mean, I think all of it is all mixed up together. So, yeah, I think it's just unfortunate that that's how we read scripture. Actually, the distinction between the idea that the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament is a very early Christian heresy. It's called Marcionism. <laughs> and it, it, Who wrote this question? I don't, Marcion said that the Old Testament God was a bad God and the New Testament of God had nothing to do with it. And, and, the, and the, the, the Christian community, which by that point, it was the second century, was a, a, a probably already a, a majority Gentile, rose up and said that's wrong because the gospel that, that we understand is so fully grounded in the story of the people of Israel. So I would ask any, the person who wrote this question to go to the Easter Vigil this Easter and listen to the story of creation and fall and especially the story of the Exodus and the other stories that, that over and over and over again anticipate everything that Jesus was teaching in his life and what it finds its culmination in his death and resurrection. You cannot separate them. Would you, would you agree that the lectionary, to some extent, is in the train of Marcion? I would. Um, uh, it, it, until recently, our Old Testament readings were always sort of, um, they were paired with the gospel reading as sort of type and anti-type, mm -hmm. as if they only found their meaning when he read the gospel reading. I'm glad that we have a, a, a new track possible in our lectionary, which allows the Old Testament to be read in sequence so that it has its own integrity. I, obviously, I mean, do we think that Jews don't think that God is a loving God? Judaism is all about God as love, and their scripture is, this, is what we call the Old Testament. So we must not, we must not make that mistake. It's a, it's a, it's a, a very unfortunate misconception that, that I run up against Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and I apologize to ever, whoever asked the question, but I feel deeply about it. Well, I think especially as we're preparing for Advent, it goes to that exact question yeah. that so often the prophecies were read as this is the only thing they were foretelling and forgetting the entire context out of which they came. So I think especially as we're kind of on the verge of entering Advent again, we have to really keep this question in mind. Um, was it all about Jesus or is there a bigger story to tell that God has been revealing God's self throughout time? Yeah.